Hi there, I'm Jill Finley from Jill Lily Studio and today I want to show you two methods for stitching your appliques in place. And don't worry, I'm going to show you hand stitching, but I also will show you machine stitching. So if you are one of those that really doesn't like hand work, um, I'll show you a good method to get really beautiful results with your machine. So first of all, I want to show you, um, here's an example, this, this quilt is called uh, Blooming Branches. And this quilt is stitched by hand. And I wanted to show you the results you get when doing hand stitching. You can see that my little appliques have a little bit of lift on them. The shapes, and it's kind of puffy. And that's because I've rolled the edge down to meet the background and it, it creates some lift on the top of the shape. It is not trapuntoed, it's just because of the way I stitch to get that beautiful look. And also the um, densely quilted background helps to give a little bit of lift but um, the method I'm going to show you will really help to improve your, your um, stitching. So this is Blooming Branches. I'm going to set this aside so that we can get working on our project. Let's put that right there. And I've got some blocks here. I've made just a little sample block. And I think maybe I can even include this as a free um, block design that you can download on the Riley Blake site if you'd like. Um, this little block, we're going to stitch two ways. First of all, we're going to do hand stitching. Now, I've already got the pieces prepped, as you can see. And um, just so you know, I've prepped these using my applique tools that are in my applique set. This is the Jalili Studio method. And um, I used my quilter's digit and my starch brush to turn those edges under. And then I glued them all down with the Jalili Studio Apple Glue. These are all attached with glue, you can see, except for the little tips, but they're just glued on there so that I can do my stitching. Now, I'm not going to show you how to prep the pieces today, like I mentioned, because that's shown in other videos here on the Riley Blake site, and also at jalilistudio.com, you can see a lot of videos about my method. So today, we're just going to use, out of the applique set, these two items. So let me set these aside. Um, we're going to use the Bowen needles, which are um, manufactured in France. They're a beautiful needle. They're very smooth. Uh, it's my favorite needle. This is the size 11. And then I'm also going to, there's my needle right there, and I'm also going to be using a polka dot. And this is a little sticky thimble that I'll stick on the end of my stitching finger. I put it on, it depends you know, everybody's different, but I put mine right there. This is to push the back of your needle so that you don't get poked. And that's why they're called polka dots. So we'll, we'll use those two items as we get ready to stitch. Now, I would normally use matching thread to match the shapes that I'm stitching on, but today I'm going to use black thread because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, okay? So I'm going to use some black thread. This is Aurifil, this is the 50 weight. And I've got a needle threader here, just this handy little item, because I it's hard to thread these tiny needles. These needles are really tiny. This is a size 11. And so there you go. Now it's threaded, and I want to show you how, um, how I tie my knot. Take the end of the thread and the point of your needle and put them together. Grab them with your fingers and wrap your thread around your needle about three or four times, pinch it, and pull that thread to the end, and there's your knot. Can you see that knot? Um, one more thing about thread, Aurifil thread is fabulous thread. It's a two-ply thread, and it doesn't have a lot of twist on it, so that it doesn't tangle up when you're stitching. Sometimes when you're hand stitching and you're using other threads, they, get, they tend to get tangled, and that's because of the twist, and so I love this. And also, I wanted to tell you that all thread has a little bit of a micros microscopic nap. So if you were to look at this underneath a microscope, you would see that the RFL thread is nice and smooth. It doesn't have a lot of lint. And it also has kind of a nap, which I, you probably can't t see it, but y it'll make a difference in sliding through your fabric. So you want that nap to lay flat. And so you want the lead end coming off of your spool to be the, the end where your needle is threaded. And the end that you cut is where you put your knot. And if you can't remember which way it goes, think of it on your sewing machine. The lead end always goes into the needle. So that way, it'll slide through your fabric smoothly. And if, if you're having trouble, 
um, stitching and your, your thread's tangling up or it's not being very smooth, just undo it and thread the other end. You'll be amazed at the difference. Okay, so I've got my thread threaded. I'm ready to go. I'm going to start on this, this petal of this little flower here. I'm going to start in the middle. It, you can start anywhere you want, but I'm going to start in the middle just because so that you can see me turn a point underneath. Um, you can see that wherever I have a point, there's a little flag of extra fabric that sticks out there. And that's because that fabric is folded one way and then the other way, and it sticks out over there. Just leave that when you're prepping your pieces. And then as you're stitching, you'll tuck it under. I'm going to take my glasses off because I can't see to stitch up close. I brought my needle coming out the fold of my shape. I don't know if you can see that. Let me pull it on through. It's coming out just the fold. And then when I do my stitching, I'm going to reach underneath the applique shape, turn my needle, travel to the next stitch, and come out the fold again. Now if you come out the top of your applique shape, if your needle comes out on top, then you're obviously going to see your thread as it rolls back down to go into the background. I like to reach my needle, kind of sweep it underneath and into the background so that it's going into the background about, oh, two needle widths under behind the edge of the, the shape. And that way, it rolls the edge down to meet the background and will give me that beautiful lift or puff on my shapes when I'm stitching. So I'm just going to take a few stitches here. And you, you'll notice that on my stitching, my method, you do not need to take teeny tiny stitches because your edge is already turned. You're not trying to turn the edge under. You're just trying to attach it to the background. So as I work towards this, let me see if when I pull this, I'll pull it really slowly so you can see. I'm coming out the, you can see that my needle is coming out the fold. And now watch what happens. Let's just take a peek at this. When I pull this thread, did you see that edge roll down? It rolled down to meet the background because I had reached underneath it here under here, turn, come out the fold. When I get towards a point, I'm going to take my stitches a tiny bit closer together because I don't want to tuck that flag under and have it come out the other side. I've been stitching from right to left because I'm right-handed. And I stitch on the edge of the piece that's away from my body. Not this one that's close to me, this one that's away, right to left. Okay, now pretend like I've stitched this whole side. I've started here in the middle and I've stitched there. And I've come to the point and I've come out the very tip of the point and now I'm going to turn my work around so that I can continue going from right to left. So I'll pull my, my thread out. And then I'll take one little tiny stitch right here at the tip to secure it. And then I tuck my flag under. By, I just grab the flag with my needle and poke it underneath, and then I can start stitching down this side. Now you'll notice that when you're, sti at, when you're at a point where you've got some extra uh, flag of fabric that you're tucking under, you'll be able to see your threads for a little bit. And that's why you want matching thread, because, because of the lift that's created by sticking that fabric underneath here, this is up off the ground. It's up off of the background. So you will see some of those threads, if that makes sense to you. And so it's nice to be able to have a matching thread. I'm doing a not matching thread so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm coming out the fold, rolling that down, reach underneath, come out the fold. And that way you won't be able to see my stitching, even though I'm using black thread, except at the very tip. It's got that caught on to an adjacent piece. Let's take a few more stitches here. I enjoy hand stitching because it gives me something to do. It's kind of mindless. Um, you know, there's no math involved, no uh, what goes next, what's this, you know, just a, a needle in the thread. And I can do it when I'm watching the news or watching a soccer game or football, whatever. It's just a um, really nice thing to keep your hands busy. So you can see now that I've started this little petal that you cannot, can, 
You really can almost not see my black thread except for maybe here at the point a little bit. But I've got, can you see that I'm creating a little bit of lift with my stitching? And that is going to pop that, puff that little shape up off the background. Um, I would continue stitching down. The important point is to reach, let's just go over the points, reach underneath your shape, dive into the background, turn and come out the fold, and your stitches do not need to be teeny tiny. And that's my, that's my applique stitching. Important thing is to use a really good needle and really nice thread and you'll have good results. Okay, so let's try, let me put my needle right here, and I've got another block here I want to, try to show you the machine stitching method. So for machine stitching, you saw how I tucked that point under when I got to the flags um, with my needle. Uh, I don't want to have to leave my machine to tuck under all the points. So I'm going to tuck under points before I take my block. Let me set that aside. Before I, this is for machine stitching. Before I take my block to the machine, I want to tuck under all of my little flags. So I'll just use my uh, quilter's digit here and grab a, a drop of glue and put under there. So I want all of these little um, tips to be tucked under. Tuck this one under. I'm only going to sew one of them, but let's tuck them all under here. Little drop of glue. We've got too much glue there. And then this one. They're easy to tuck under. They kind of just fold underneath and then put a drop of glue there to hold that in place while you're under your needle at your machine. There we go. Okay. All right, that is ready. And now I'm going to set up my machine. Now, for, for my method of machine stitching, I use clear or monofilament thread on the top. And I use cotton thread in the bobbin. So leave your cotton bobbin in, but add your monofilament thread. Monofilament thread comes in a spool that is usually straight wound. Can you see that this spool, it's kind of hard to see because it's clear. <laughs> But it is straight wound onto that spool, and that means it's supposed to go on an upright pin. So um, my machine has this optional upright pin, and that allows this spool to, to kind of turn. So as the thread is coming off of it, that's how it feeds into your machine. Crosswound spools, such as Aurifil, are meant to go on your machine horizontally. So that, and they, they are stationary. So you load it on here, and it's stationary, and then the thread just kind of floats off. So this, it, this won't work on an upright spool as smoothly, not as nice. So if you have a crosswound spool, put it on stationary in the horizontal mode, and then a, cross, a straight wound spool like this will go on your machine in an upright way. Okay, so that's the first thing. I've changed my thread. Then I have to change my tension, and it depends on your machine. My old Bernina, I had to turn my tension all the way to zero to use the monofilament thread because it stretches and it will pucker your work if you don't have the right tension. This machine I've got it turned down to, oh, let's see, I'm going to turn it down. It's, I'm going to turn this down to probably two and a half. That's my tension. And it's normally five and a half. And then um, the other adjustment I will make is I'm going to change my stitch to a zigzag. Okay. When you're starting this method, I say to use one and one. One in width and one in length, okay? So it's one, whatever that, maybe it's millimeters, I don't know what the measurement is, but it's on a one setting for width and a one setting for length for your stitches. Um, I like to do it about a 0.7. As you get better, you can do a smaller zigzag. You want just a barely zigzag. And what I want, let me set this down here so you can see. What I want to happen is I want my needle to go into the background, pretend this is my needle, um, right next to the applique shape, but into the background, and then to zigzag over onto the shape, and zag, zig, zag. Now I'm exaggerating it so that you can see. Zig, zag, zig, zag. But when I really get in there, I'm just gonna barely catch that edge of the fold. I forgot to mention that because um, I've previously done uh, my applique shapes, prepared them. These all have turned edges, so I'm going to be catching the fold. 
This has a very, you know, you can have still no raw edges and do machine applique. So this isn't the fusible machine applique. This is applique with turned edges done, stitched by machine. Okay, so I've got my machine set up with my tension turned down, my monofilament thread is on, and I've got my zigzag set to, uh, I've got a 0.8 on there right now. And I'm going to, let me see which direction it's going. You know, it zigs and then it zags. So let me get my thread inside this bobbin, uh, presser foot. I'm using a clear presser foot so that I can see where I'm going. Drop that down. You can use an open toe foot, whichever one you like. And then I'm just going to take a little zig, zag, right onto the edge of my shape. And it's going to be really hard to see. Maybe I should thread the machine with regular thread so you could see it. But I wanted you to see how nice this looks. When I get to this tip, I'll stop with my needle down. I wonder why my needle didn't stay down. And then this, this machine has this nice hover thing. It just pops up, so it's kind of nice. You don't have to lift the presser foot. And then away we go. Zigzag, zigzag on the edge of the shape. I've got one flag down here that I forgot to tuck under, so I'm going to stop right there so that you can take a peek at this. So now you can see, um, hard to see on camera, but you can see that this is attached. It's just a tiny little zigzag along the edge here of my shape. And it's clear so you don't see it. The, the thread on the bobbin is, um, let's see if you can see that. It's white. You can't see that either. But anyway, trust me, it's really great. Now I want to show you the difference between these two projects. This one stitched by machine. See how this shape is going to just lay flat because I've, all I've done is just attached it in place while it's flat. And this one, because it's stitched by hand, has that nice lift. Can you see the difference there? That's going to give you that beautiful hand stitched look because it's, it creates the lift from reaching underneath your shape and coming out the, the side. So there's two methods for stitching applique. There's a time and a place for both. I hope you enjoy these. And be sure to follow me on my Instagram. And check out my uh, website at jalilystudio.com. <music>